wanted to work through the worksheet on capacitors and a circuit involving capacitors and a battery. Yeah, you can see the circuit in the figure here. It's got one battery, nine volt battery. That's at the bottom of the circuit. Then it's got four, four separate, four individual capacitors. There's one on the left arm, one on the right arm, and there's two on the upper arm. Those two capacitors are in parallel with one another. That arrangement is in series with the capacitor on the left and the capacitor on the right. We've named these capacitors as C1, C2, C3, C4. Uh, we know the values of the individual capacitors. They're 6, they're 8, they're 8, and 2 micro farads respectively and we're asked a number of questions in parts a b c d in this worksheet uh, about this arrangement of capacitors this circuit involving capacitors this first one is what is the equivalent capacitance of the entire arrangement of four capacitors the other questions are related to well what are the voltages across the individual capacitors what are the charges stored on the individual capacitors and what is the energy stored by the arrangement of capacitors so we're going to work through all of those parts of this problem in doing this i'm going to actually introduce two equivalent capacitors that will help us solve the problem that will kind of be helpers in solving the problem and uh, let me just first mark those two equivalent capacitors up on the drawing. So one of the equivalent capacitors that I'm going to be thinking about in solving the problem is one I've called C prime. It's the equivalent capacitance of this part or piece of the circuit that involves capacitor C1 and C4 that are on the upper section of the circuit. It involves these two capacitors in, in parallel with one another. A second equivalent capacitance that we're gonna be thinking about is actually the equivalent capacitance of the entire arrangement of capacitors. So it involves C2 on the left, C3 on the right, and this equivalent capacitor C prime that's made up of C1 and C4. So I've called that equivalent capacitor C subscript equivalent. And these are going to be very handy for us. So the first part of this problem asks, what's the equivalent capacitance of the entire network of capacitors, the four capacitors? I'm going to do that in two steps. I'm going to first figure out the equivalent capacitance C prime of that parallel network involving C1 and C4. Then when we got that capacitance, I'll figure out the equivalent capacitance of the entire circuit. The reason I'm doing it in that order, in that sequence, is C1 and C4 are firstly in parallel with one another. I can use the rule for parallel capacitors. Then C2, C3, and C prime are all in series with one another. I can use the rules for combining capacitors in series. So by breaking the circuit up in that particular way, I can use step-by-step -step rules for parallel capacitors, uh, rules for series capacitors. So let's go, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, C prime. So C prime is the equivalent capacitance for C1 and C4 in parallel. And the rule for parallel capacitors is that the equivalent capacitance is the sum of the individual capacitances. So C prime is C1 plus C4. Uh, we know the value of C1. It's six microfarads. I'm going to be naughty. Just uh, write the number rather than keep writing microfarads. Uh, we know C4. It's just two microfarads. Again, I'm being naughty. And if we add six and four, two together, we get eight. We get eight microfarads is the equivalent capacitance C prime. Now we can find the equivalent capacitance of the entire network because we've got three capacitors, C2, C prime, C3. 
that are in series with one another. We can use the rules for series capacitors. The rules for series capacitors is that the equivalent capacitance, the reciprocal or inverse of the equivalent capacitance, is equal to the sum of the reciprocals or inverses of the individual capacitance. So in our particular case, the uh, sum of the equivalent capacitances inverses is uh, C, C2's inverse, C prime's inverse, and C3's inverse. And again, you know all these capacitances, C2 is eight microfarads, so this is gonna be one over eight. C3 is, sorry, C prime, is uh, also eight microfarads, so it's another one over eight. And then C3 is also eight microfarads, so that's another one over eight. So this adds up to uh, three over eight, and that's, um, that's units is inverse microfarads, because these were inverse capacitances. Uh, the equivalent capacitance then is simply the inverse of this is just going to be eight over three microfarads. And so you see, we've solved the first part of the problem. Of what's the equivalent capacitance of the entire network of four capacitors, breaking it up into series parallel parts, uh, using the rules for combining capacitances in series and parallel parts to analyze ultimately the entire circuit and its equivalent capacitance, eight over three microfarads. Now, the next two parts of the problem involve calculating the charge stored and potential across the four individual capacitors. I'm going to work on these two parts, B and C, of this particular worksheet together. I'm not going to do B, the charge stored first, and then do C, the potential second. Well, I could do it that way. It's fine to do it that way. But I can save myself a little bit of time if I think about doing these two things together. So that's the first idea. I'm going to work on uh, the charge stored and the potential across the individual ca capacitors together, solving the, those two parts of the problem together. The other part of my approach to this part of the problem is that I'm actually going to think about two distinct circuits as I work through this part of the problem. One distinct circuit that I'll come to is um, the arrangement of all the capacitors. But the other distinct circuit that I'll be thinking about is the arrangement where I've replaced C1 and C4, the two parallel capacitors, by the single equivalent capacitance. Um, so let me let me mark that. So so here's C prime, and it will be very handy for me to think about um, the circuit involving C2, C prime, and C3 as I work through this problem of solving the charges and the voltages on and across all the individual capacitors. So the first thing I'm going to compute, the first thing I'm going to figure out is actually the charge on the plates of C2, C3, and C prime. We're going to find the charge on the, the plates of those three capacitors. Two of them are the individual capacitors in the original circuit, two C2, C3, and one of them is this equivalent capacitor. But we're going to find the charges on all three of those. Um, the way that we're going to find the charges on all three of those is by using a rule for capacitors in series. And these three capacitors are in series. And that rule for capacitors in series is that each of the capacitors stores a charge, which is equivalent to the charge stored by the single equivalent capacitor that represents those three capacitors. So the, the idea is that 
And the key point is that for three capacitors in series, the charge on each individual capacitor, so it'll be, we'll call it charge Q2, the capacitor two, it'll be charge Q3, the capacitor three, it'll be charge uh, Q prime, I call it, for capacitor C prime, uh, is the same as the charge on the individual sorry, the equivalent capacitor, I'll call that C equivalent, and the charge on the in equivalent capacitor, well, by the law for a capacitor that describes a capacitor that C equals Q over V, we can write that equivalent charge on the equivalent capacitor as being equal to the, the, the ratio of the, the product of the capacitance of that capacitor times the voltage across that capacitor. So I'm going to write Q equivalent as C equivalent times V equivalent. Now I did that because, well, C equivalent we've already figured out is 8 over 3 microfarads. V equivalent, well, that's just the voltage supplied by the battery. That's nine volts. That's applied across the entire equivalent capacitance. So we know C equivalent. We know V equivalent. We can just multiply them to find the, um, the charge on the equivalent capacitor, which actually tells us immediately the charge on Q2, charge on Q3, charge on Q prime. So let me fill that in. So again, I'm being naughty. Uh, eight over three is eight over three microfarads, the equivalent capacitors capacitance. Nine is nine volts. Uh, that's the voltage that the battery supplies to the capacitor. And if I take the product of eight over three divided, multiplied by nine, that comes out to be twenty four. And that's microcoulombs, 24 microcoulombs of charge on the equivalent capacitor. And it's the charge on Q2, Q3, and Q prime as well. Well, I'm going to hang around in this uh, circuit involving C2, C prime, and C3 a little bit longer. I'm going to hang around in this part of the circuit to figure out the now the voltages across C2, C prime, and C3. And now that's pretty easy if, because at this stage, we know the charges on the plates of these three capacitors. We know the capacitance of these three capacitors. So we can just use that master equation for capacitors. So C equals Q over V and solve it for the uh, voltage, the potential difference across these capacitors. So for example, V2, the voltage across the second capacitance, using the master equation for capacitors, is just going to be equal to um, the charge on the plates. So it's Q2 divided by the capacitance of the capacitor. We know both these numbers. Right? We've got um, 24 microfarads, coulombs, is the charge on the plates. Uh, we've got a capacitance that's uh, 8 microfarads. And if I divide 24 by 8, that's going to be 3. And that is um, 3 volts. 3 volts across capacitor C2. We can do exactly the same thing for uh, C3, its voltage, V3, and uh, C prime, its voltage, V prime. So let me do that. Um, when I do this, I, I won't write down the individual numbers here just to save some space. So for uh, V3, its voltage, potential difference, is going to be the charge on its plates, Q3, uh, the capacitance of C3. We know both these numbers. This, again, is going to be 24 microfarads divided by the capacitance of um, 8 micro. Uh, it's going to be 24 microcoulombs divided by a capacitance of 8 microfarads and that, again, comes out to be 3 volts. And um, likewise, for V prime, for V prime, the uh, 
voltage across V, the equivalent capacitance V prime is going to be uh, the charge on its plate, that's Q prime, divided by the capacitance of that equivalent capacitor, that's C prime. And again, we would plug in the numbers. So it's going to be 24 microcoulombs again. It's going to be eight microfarads again. And so that comes out again to be three. That's that's three volts. And so those are the voltages on those three capacitors. Actually, interesting thing there. And maybe you would have guessed this answer of three volts, three volts, three volts for V2, V3, and V prime, because those capacitors are sharing the nine volts supplied by the battery. Since they're all equal capacitances, C2 and C3 and C prime are all eight microfarad capacitors. They share the nine volts equally. So they each get a third, which is three volts. So it makes some sense. So let's take a moment to recap what we've accomplished at this point as we've analyzed the circuit involving C2, C prime, C3. We've been able to figure out the charges on Q2 and Q3, that was one of the questions we were asked. We've been able to figure out the voltages on uh, C2 and C3. That was the other question that we were asked. All we've got left to do now is also find the voltages and the charges on the capacitors C1 and C4. So now we've just got to solve the voltages and charges for C1 and C4. So now we're going to focus on that circuit that made up C prime, which involves C1 upstairs here in parallel with C4 downstairs here. And we're going to use the the our understanding, our rules for how uh, voltages and charges come are put together when you have uh, capacitors in parallel. So when you have capacitors in parallel, the rule is that the um, voltage across the equivalent capacitor is actually equal to the voltage across the individual capacitors. And so that will be our starting point. And so I'm going to write that down. Uh, I'm going to write down the fact that the voltage across capacitor one, which is V1, is going to be equal to the voltage across capacitor four, which is V4 which is equal to the voltage across the equivalent capacitor, which is V prime. And we know the voltage across the equivalent capacitor. It was three volts. And so we actually have just written down what the voltage is across V1 and V4. It too is three volts. So V1 and C1 and C4 also have uh, three volts between their, between their plates. At this point, now we know the voltages on the capacitors V, C1, and C4, and we also know their capacitances. We can again use the master equation for capacitance, C equals Q over V, and um, solve this time for the charge on the plates of C1 and the charge on the plates of C4. So, for example, for uh, Q1, that's the charge on the plates of C1. We've just got to, by using the the master equation that C equals Q over V, Q1 will be C1, V1. We know C1. Uh, C1 is six microfarads, being naughty again, just writing down six. Uh, the voltage across it is three volts. And uh, six times three, that's 18. It's going to be 18 microcoulombs of charge on the place of that capacitor. Uh, same thing for uh, the other capacitor in this arrangement. So that's uh, Q4. Uh, the charge on Q4 is going to be the product of its capacitance and the voltage across its plate. So C4, V4. We know both these numbers. Again, uh, C4 is just two microfarads. Uh, the voltage across it is that same three volts. So it's two times three. And two times three is is six, and that's going to be six microcoulombs of charge on its plate. So we've just completed the whole part of 
B, the whole part of C, the charges and the voltages on the four different capacitances. It sounded like a lot of work. It was a significant amount of work, but by going about it the right way, we were over, able to solve it efficiently. We, we firstly used our ability to think about different versions of the circuit, different versions involving equivalent capacitances. Uh, we use C prime. We used our ideas about thinking about individual parts of the circuit, where we thought about the two capacitors that make up C prime. Uh, in solving the problem, uh, we use the rules for capacitors in parallel and series. Capacitors in series, they all have the same charge on their plates. Capacitors in parallel, they all have the same voltage across their plates. And of course, we use the master equation for capacitors that C equals Q over V. We would rearrange it for the voltage when we wanted the voltage in terms of the charge. We would rearrange it for the charge when we wanted the um, charge in terms of the voltage. But we use that model master equation for capacitors, C equals Q over V, multiple times. One last part of this worksheet. Part D, we've got to calculate the electrical energy that's stored in the four capacitor network. Well, you could walk through each capacitor and figure out the charge, figure out the energy that's stored by each capacitor. And then capacitor by capacitor, add those energies up to get the total charge, uh, total energy. That would be one way of solving that, that problem. Uh, each time you would calculate the energy on an individual capacitor, uh, you could use uh, one half CV squared because you know the voltage and the capacitance. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also use the um, the equation one half Q squared over C because you know the charge of the capacitance. Or you could equivalently use the um, the equation one half QV which also tells you the energy stored by an individual capacitor. So there's multiple ways you could go about adding up the, uh, figuring out the energies on the individual capacitors and then adding them all up to get the total energy. But there's an even quicker way. The quickest way to find out the total stored energy is just to think about the single equivalent capacitors. We called it C subscript equivalent. Uh, the energy that's stored by C subscript equivalent, well, we could just figure that one energy out, and that is the total energy stored. So we could use, again, one half CV squared to figure out the total energy stored by the equivalent capacitance. We'd have to be careful to use C equivalent and the, and the voltage across C equivalent. We could use one half Q squared over C to figure out the total energy, again, being careful to use the uh, equivalent charge the stored, charge stored by the equivalent capacitance, or we can use just um, one half QV to figure out the equivalent uh, and the energy stored by that equivalent capacitance. And in a way, that's the simplest equation. We don't have to square things. We don't have to square the charge or square the voltage. Um, and so I'm just going to use that one because I thought that would be quickest. Uh, the energy stored by the equivalent capacitance, and hence the entire circuit, I'll call it U equivalent, is one half QV, where Q is the charge stored by the equivalent capacitance. Uh, v is the voltage across the equivalent capacitance. The charge stored by the equivalent capacitance, um, we remember back what, what that is. That charge stored by the equivalent capacitance is 24 microcoulombs. It's the same charge that was stored by Q2 and the same charge that was stored by Q3 and by Q prime. So that, that is 24 microcoulombs. The voltage across the equivalent capacitance, that's easy. That's just the voltage supplied by the battery to the equivalent capacitance. So that's um, nine volts. Uh, inside parentheses here, we've got um, 
24 times 9. Now, 24 times 10 is 240, obviously. Uh, 24 times 9 is 240 minus 24, so it's 216. Uh, we want half of 216, and so half of 216 is 108. The energy that's stored by the equivalent capacitor, and hence stored by the entire circuit of capacitors, is going to be 108 times, sorry, 108 microjoules of energy. And so that's the answer to that last part of the problem. So just to recap, this was a problem where we analyzed a circuit involving four capacitors in a battery. We first calculated the equivalent capacitor of the entire arrangement of four capacitors. To do that, we used our rules for capacitors in parallel, capacitors in series, and how to calculate the capacitance of capacitors in parallel and capacitances in series. At the end, we use that equivalent capacitance to actually calculate the energy stored in the circuit. That was very handy. In between the first thing we did, the equivalent capacitance of the circuit, and the last thing we did, the energy that's stored by the circuit, we got into the guts of the circuit. We were thinking about the four individual capacitors in the circuit, and we found actually eight quantities that we were asked to figure out. The four voltages are four across the four capacitances, and the uh, four, four charges that are stored on the individual capacitances. And we did all that, we did all that with um, as some basic ideas. One idea for the series circuit is series capacitors is that they also store the same charge. And the other idea for parallel circuit of capacitors is, is that they all have the same applied voltage across their plates. So those are two key ideas. Um, we supplemented those two key ideas with um, the, the law of capacitors, the master equation for capacitors, that's C equals Q over B. So we use that multiple times. And we also supplemented uh, those ideas with our understanding that we could think about the circuit in very different ways. We could think about the circuit, you know, as an arrangement of four capacitors. We could think about parts of the circuit where we just think about the two capacitors in parallel. Uh, we could think about the circuit as made up of equivalent capacitances. For example, C prime representing the two capacitors in parallel. Depending on your viewpoint, you might think of this worksheet, this, this problem as just a glorious a really fabulous example of working with capacitors in electrical circuits. I mean, of course, you might think of it as a horrible, horrendous problem involving capacitors in circuits. But it really, either way, whether you're in the fabulous camp or in your horrible camp, uh, it is a, an example. It is an illustration of all the understanding all the components of the understanding that go on into understanding circuits involving arrangements of capacitors.